How do you all of you delicious people? I'm here today to review Cellular from 2004. This is a Chris Evans, Jason Statham film where very rarely we go on and we see Jason Statham as a villain in a story. So we have a character uh, who's played uh, by Kim Basinger called Jessica. Jessica is to go on and via a broken phone be able to miraculously touch wires together and be able to randomly call Chris Evans' character Ryan. And instead of Ryan just going on and having this girl waste his time with a possible prank call and he or really just to say it's like I'm sorry you have the wrong number and hang up and said Ryan is to take this woman seriously and is to con is to be convinced by what this girl has to say and so he goes on and is to miraculously save not only her life but the life of others so within this story this movie does get interesting because like at first uh like i'm even trying to understand like how exactly is it that uh these cops are to want to kidnap a certain family and then come to find out it all comes into the fold when finally we have uh ryan who gets some video evidence of why and so he's like, oh, okay, I get what the connection is here. And so we go on and we have to really rely on a certain number of things here. We have to kind of deal with like Bob Mooney, who just won't let a case go. We have to rely on the fact that uh, Ryan is to be able to go and do all of these crimes without police or anybody really giving a crap. <laughs> I guess they're just so busy th that day. And we also have to rely on the fact that Ricky Martin is a kid in this film. <laughs> and so even Ryan is to make the joke. It's like, seriously, you called your kid Ricky Martin? And we go on and we have Jessica is like, well, like, we didn't really realize, like, uh, like, it was well before this kid was to even go on and, uh, and that pop star was to come out and be singing and dancing and junking and jiving. Uh, so yeah, uh, Ricky Martin, now a household name, I'm sure, you know, he's kind of like, he's gone on to do, uh, other things. So... <laughs> What's kind of, like, the funniest things is, like, what's all kind of supposedly relevant in this movie, like, doesn't feel to be all that relevant or is to all make sense. Or a lot of people can go on now and just be, like, pulling apart this movie and just be like, mm, it doesn't really quite work. But it's a fun adventure movie uh, to go on and have this character, this random stranger, help these people and then also have to turn around and put almost his life on the line for these people. So, yeah, like, it goes on to have a really interesting story. There's a pretty good cast here. And so I just go on and enjoy it. So teeing it up, exactly what is this movie about? So Jessica is to go on and be taken and held hostage from her phone to this other uh home away from her home so we go on and ethan who is jason satham here is to break this phone jessica is to go on and reassemble it technically randomly calling ryan convincing him that hey like i need your help like please go on and just go to some police station and like i'll i'll do the rest Ryan, everywhere he is to go, is to consistently have problems one way or the other with his cell phone service or 
him not being able to get to the right people. And so Ryan now has to rely on himself to save the day. To where all of a sudden when Bob is to be this detective that is to first um, know about this phone call, it seems that also Bob is to miraculously miraculously start to be involved in this case because it's just like a thing that just is bugging him and he just like he is to go on and decide it's like well i gotta take a personal interest in this because i have nothing better to do um because i guess bob is to slowly but surely uh go into doing a day spa and so he's to really just go on and like almost be like retired at this point after 27 years and he is to live uh, the rest of his retirement with Maureen uh, going on and doing a day spa, which everybody is to like say it's like a, uh, a beauty salon or something like that. And so Bob is like, it's a day spa. Like, how many times do I have to say that to people? So, with that said, uh, yeah. We have Ryan that's running all over the place, stealing cars, uh, robbing cell phones, cell phone places, and desperately trying in some way or another to help out Jessica. So, uh it becomes a real interesting story when they eventually find out how Jessica is miraculously connected uh, to all of these men who are to kidnap her. It's a real fun story. It's a real fun hoot, as they say, uh, from a while ago. <laughs> who says hoot anymore? I don't know. Maybe some people do. Uh, it's a it's a real laugh riot if anybody says that either. <laughs> So, with that said, I think it's about that time to just go into spoilers about this one, because I've already, like, described this movie. Uh, what would be the grading of this movie? Where can you conveniently see cellular? Um, I think the grading of this movie is it just has to be, like... It's an okay, like, kind of toss your brain out and just enjoy the adventure kind of film. Because there's so much about this where I'm like, this movie possibly doesn't exactly hold up. Or this movie is to go on and like be something that you'd have to take like logic out of this movie a lot. Um, too much of this is to just be like, man, uh, like how is it that all of this conveniently all happened? Um... There's too much convenience in this film uh, to have certain people just decide like, well, I guess I should give a f here and oh, I guess I should care and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, so we go on to this story and just a massive convenience um, for everybody. Where can you go on and see this movie? This movie is currently available on 2B, T-U-B-I. Uh, all you have to do if you've never been into the 2B app before is to go on and just have a Google account and you can buy any amount of time. Go on and watch every single thing on Tubi for absolutely free because it has ads in between certain parts of the film so you don't have to pay a fee of any kind to go and watch a Tubi movie or show because there's shows on there also. So with that said, I think it's about that time to just go into spoiler time. Spoiler time, let's go into this one. I said so. So, uh, so yeah, let's go into it. So, we of course have Jessica that is to be talking to her kid in the beginning of this movie about a fish tank. They keep talking about a fish tank for some reason. Maybe they're going to buy a fish tank soon. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the story is of the whole fish tank thing. But they're talking about, maybe they, maybe they said, maybe they mentioned... Uh, in the movie that they're going to buy one. I don't know. It just They just keep rattling on about it. So, all of a sudden, Ricky Martin is is uh, going on and talking to his mother. 
and mentioning it's like, well, hey, Ma, do you think that you're still going to be a like a science teacher by the time that I, I get up to high school? And Jessica is like, well, like, well, maybe why? And Ricky is going on and saying like, well, like, I don't want you to be my teacher. And really, when it comes down to it, like that would never actually happen. Uh, really, for a lot of schools, they would try to like prevent like a uh, a parent teaching their kid because a lot of times you would probably be like playing favorites and you would probably go on and like give a kid give your kid like an A without doing any real effort. So there's that for you. So we go on and we have Martin who's going off to school and then Jessica is getting ready for her to go to school and to do her teaching job. And all of a sudden we of course ending ending up having Chris or Chris, uh, Jason Statham, who is Ethan, and a number of his men all go on and take Jessica from her home and put her into another home to go on and have her in this attic. And they see that there's a phone there and they break the phone. So Jessica is to go on and put wires to this phone and is to dial, uh, because she, of course, can't conveniently just hit buttons do, 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 or anything like that. So Jessica's to go on and call a man named Ryan. And so let me prepare you for Ryan here. So Ryan, of course, is to go on with a guy named Chad to go off in... Uh, in this nice like sunny day where everybody's wearing bikinis and and every woman of course in this movie is hot because they are because uh, it's a film <laughs> you know what honestly like i think that they should all have all kinds of women in all shapes and sizes and whatever i actually like in later movies where it feels like not everybody is an effing supermodel and like they show people from all shapes and sizes because uh, it seems like real life instead of this like fabricating like oh well everybody just has to be the thinnest person in, in the movie well that's great because you could also just have a normal looking person uh, so that's that's the beef so we go on, we have Ryan, who is trying to win over Jessica Biel's character, Chloe. And so, Ryan is, like, is asking Chloe, it's like, well, hey, like, how can I get involved in the charity that's going on here? Like, how can I help? And Chloe's like, you sure you really want to help here? And Ryan's like, yes, whatever I need to do, like to prove that I'm a, a different man, I'm changed. Um, because Chloe is to go on and say, it's like, well, hey, you're not grown up enough for me. And so like, that's the reasoning for me wanting to go on and like, uh, and break up with you. And Ryan's like, well, hey, like, let me do something with this charity. Like, give me an opportunity to go on and prove that I'm a different guy. So Chloe goes on and is to give Ryan uh, this Home Depot thing for him to go on and do and for him to go on and grab some shirts. And so Ryan goes on and is to basically uh, substitute this job off to Chad, forcing him to do this. So... And then Ryan is to go on and uh, do something on his own. So, all of a sudden, Ryan is to go on and get this, uh, get this phone call, and that's when Jessica is to be on his, his phone. So, there also is to be this other caller, and Ryan is, is to switch over, and of course, it's Chad. Chad is to, of course, be forced to wear this kind of whale costume, and he's mentioning that it's actually working in his favor 
because he used to kind of make these jokes and stuff like that about like how big of a uh, a wang a whale has. Like, hey guys, eleven inches, really? Yeah. <laughs> so that's how big a whale's hoo hoo is. Hoo hoo dilly. Anyways, <laughs> hoo hoo dilly. Um, man, that's the only thing that I liked about uh, like censored TV when you would go and watch a movie. And you would have this like bizarrish censorship where they go on of like, hey, you tuna sandwich. <laughs> hey, you hoo hoo dilly. <laughs> you French maker. I swear, somebody needs to do a buddy cop movie or just a movie where like they make fun of the fact that like TV movies used to go on before. And do all that crap. And they should go on and have a movie just about that. Where it's like every time somebody like is to call somebody something. It's going to be this like absurd name that makes no sense. Uh, to just give us those remembering times of like us really going on and watching like normal TV. And like there would be all this like weird absurd sensory sh or censorship that made no freaking sense. Or they would just go on and just be like how Hey, but mother, you about it? Anyways, so pu pushing this story along because I'm ranting. Uh, I'm at I'm, I'm at the the long stretch. It's been a long day, so my apologies. But anyways, so I'm just having fun. It's what's it's what's going on. So Ryan is to go and have his his phone with Jessica. It's like hey. Like, uh, like, cut it out, lady. Like, this isn't right. Uh, you're wasting my minutes, ma'am. And Jessica is like, who are you? What is your name? And he's like, Ryan. And Jessica is like, well, hey, I don't know who you are. And I don't care. <laughs> like, I, I'm, uh, like, Jessica is like, you know what? Like, I, like, I just need your help. Like, all you need to go go do is just take this phone to a police station and I'll do the rest. And Ryan is like, okay, well, I'm going to make my way to a police station and, like, and I'll just hand this over. So, Ryan goes on and is to find a guy named Bob Mooney and he answers his phone. He's like, hello, miss. Because Ryan is to give Bob the 411 on this uh, this kidnapping situation. So Bob is to pick up the phone and is to get this girl's name and this address. And so... All of a sudden there's this like weird thing going on in this police precinct that is to get every cop scrambling in this precinct to get all these cop to get all these criminals. And... Bob is now telling Ryan, like, hey, go on uh, up these flight of stairs uh, and go and try to get this other, like, uh, this other precinct and they'll they'll take it from there. Evidently, Bob doesn't realize how, like, cell phone things don't exactly work. So, Ryan is continuing to walk up these flight of stairs and all of a sudden we find out that his signal is getting weaker and weaker as Ryan is work, walking further and further up these stairs, which I don't really believe that whatsoever. So Ryan is at the flight of stairs, making his realizing he's going to lose his signal. So Ryan is just shouting, anybody there, help me. <laughs> and no one's coming because no one cares. So we have Ryan that is realizing that uh, no one's going to help him here. And so we also have Jessica who is talking to Ethan and there is a message left uh, at this house stating uh, that one, uh, Craig is going to be at this place called the left field but before that, we also have to deal with the fact that, like, Ethan is telling Jessica, it's like, well, hey, like, 
uh, like, I'm going to go and get your kid because your kid is, is in school, so I'm going to go and get him. I don't know how exactly that Ethan is to immediately know what school this kid is at. I guess it's got to be like going through all of his stuff and figuring it out. But I also don't know why I would sound like this when I'm Jason Statham. <laughs> uh, does anybody remember the Italian job when uh, Seth Green is to go on and do that impersonation of, of Jason Statham and, uh, and him going after that girl? And uh, like there's the, the moment, of course, where... Where... Uh, he is to try to hit on the girl and, and try to get her to whisk away uh, to her place so he can get her uh, her outfit and everything. So, uh, very interesting film, but anyways. So, Ryan goes on to eventually uh, realize that he is going to like hear this call and so Jessica is mentioning to Ryan, it's like, hey, you got to get to this school before they do. So Ryan goes on to try to make it to the school and is calling for a, guy, a kid named Ricky Martin. And Ryan's like, seriously, your kid's named Ricky Martin? And Jessica's like, well, yeah, like we didn't realize that our son was going to be named after uh, like a pop star. And so Ryan is just like, whatever. <laughs> So, Ryan, of course, is asking Jessica, it's like, well, hey, like, what, like, clothes is he in? And so Jessica's to rattle off that he has, like, blonde hair, and he is to be wearing this, uh, this certain thing of clothes. And Ryan's like, everybody in this school is wearing that clothes, or wearing those clothes. So... We have Ryan who is to meet up with his security guard and the security guard's like, hey, what are you doing here, son? And all of a sudden Ryan is to go on and he's just like, well, hey, just take me to the office so I can go on and get Ricky Martin to like come down to the office so I can pick him up. All of a sudden the school lets out right at that time and so... Now Ryan has to scramble to just try to figure out where Ricky Martin is. So Jessica is mentioning that this kid has a Lord of the Rings backpack. And I'm like, Lord of the Rings? Really, kid? <laughs> you couldn't have had a, a different kind of backpack? Really? Was this movie trying to sponsor the Lord of the Rings? Uh... Nobody from this movie was actually in the movie Lord of the Rings. Isn't that kind of sad? Wouldn't it be cool if there was some extra character that all of a sudden was from Lord of the Rings? There probably was. Anyways, pushing on. So, Ryan does spot the kid with the Lord of the Rings backpack, but it's too late. Because as soon as the kid is to turn around and be like, what? All of a sudden he's grabbed and being uh, shoved into this vehicle... And so Ryan is going to be like, hey, that got that kid got kidnapped. And so Ryan is stealing this guy's security vehicle that conveniently in the glove department has a gun in it. Wow, that's that's some real convenient see there, isn't there? Why does Ryan need to just like try to figure out how to get a gun to do any number of things? He just conveniently has a gun right in the glove compartment. But so we have Ryan that is to use this security vehicle to try and chase after this car. But it seems that at one point we have Ryan who's like stuck behind this bus. And then when he tries to curve around, all of a sudden he is to go on and go into a different part of the road. And so at some point he starts to lose this car. And so... Now Ryan is like desperately trying to figure out where this car is and like he's thinking there might be a possibility for him to go on and find this car. But then all of a sudden 
Ryan is to realize that his cell phone is starting to run out of charge or run out of battery or battery is low. So Ryan all of a sudden is to scramble and is to now have to realize that he is to need a charger for his phone. And Jessica is like, well, don't you have a charger with you? And Ryan's like, yeah, it's at home. <laughs> like anybody like no one ever really brings their charger of their phone with them and like i don't know how many times a lot of people wouldn't probably have an importance of a cell phone as much as we do now probably from back then so and i don't know how many times like i would probably go on and not have my cell phone probably well charged anyways <laughs> I don't know how many times where I'm just like looking at my phone and I'm like, oh my God, I only have like 20% of my battery left. Ooh. And I'm going on and having to like go somewhere and do something. And I'm just kind of worried that I only have like 20% left the cell phone battery charge. Uh, but it used to be in the old days where I used to go to places and do things and whatever. Uh, now, like my cell phone is just so garbo. That it's just like, man, uh, like I don't even have it on anymore. <laughs> like, I'm just like, man, I'm just going to like burn up the freaking battery uh, of my phone and just like, uh, like, and it just takes a while to just charge it. And so it's just like, psh. so anyways, going on a whole nother story for a whole nother day. So anyways, we go on here. Uh, so we have Ryan that, uh, is to go on, go into this store that is to have this sale, uh, for the cellular stuff. So Ryan is to beg and plead and jump through lines everywhere. It seems man, does everybody just go out of their way to just like, let Ryan just like, do whatever he wants in this movie. Uh, going on and just letting him... Oh, yeah, you can cut in line. Sure. <laughs> How is it that they just let Ryan just do everything in this film... With the exclusion of getting him a freaking phone charger? So... Ryan goes into this store and is to beg and plead with these people. Hey, like, I have an emergency phone call... And I just desperately need, like, a phone charger. That's all I need. And they're like, well, sir, I'm sorry, but you need to get in line, sir. Like, you need to go and grab a ticket. That's the only way we'll allow you to uh, to go on and get what you need. So Ryan just gets so upset and he's just so worried that he might lose his call. Ryan takes the extreme measure and is to grab this gun from this glove compartment, shoot uh, this sign, and is like, just give me the charger from my phone. And so they're like, here you go. Here's every accessory. Here you go. As if they had this, like, uh, this set up already. And so Ryan is to pay for this. And so all of a sudden we have later on where this exchange is in the news and they're saying it's like well like this guy held you up at gunpoint and they're like well yeah and he paid for it <laughs> and so it's just like this is just like the uh the michael douglas movie all over again where like michael douglas is to go on and he is to be like very upset with the world. I think it was like the, the falling down movie uh, that I actually thoroughly enjoyed, even though like towards the further and further end of the movie, there was stuff that I started to not enjoy, but like the whole journey of this man, just having a really bad day turning into this, like this real legit moment where like this guy just wants something and people are just being a, a dick about it. So, or a-holes about it. So, but pushing on, I'm, I'm tangenting, I'm sorry, I don't care. <laughs> it's cool. For within my, my brain noggin, uh, I eventually just have to get this out. So, 
Ryan goes on and is to just peel out of here, is to be charging his phone, and so now, like, Ryan is to go on and continue to talk to Jessica. I guess, luckily, Ryan has enough minutes on his phone, right, too? Because I guess it's a minute plan and all that stuff. I think I possibly remember when this this movie came out, I think they were trying to, like, I think phone companies were trying to get on the hook to, to try and, like, uh, really sell this movie. Sell? <laughs> Joke. Anyways, so push on. Ryan goes on and is to now have to try and at some point find Craig. Because we go on into this story and Craig had left this message and so now we go on and we now have the race to get Craig. If if Ricky is to be uh, a character that Ryan could not get to. Now there's another guy that uh, that now Ryan has to help. So we, of course, go on and Jessica has no clue what the connection is between these men. And, like, Craig is just a realtor, so it doesn't make any sense of why these people are trying to kidnap these people. And so, like, nothing really truly makes sense. Also, we have Bob Mooney, who is to go on and, within some SWAT car, go on and put this address and certain information in uh, in this database, because I guess anybody can just go into squad car and just get database information. So, Bob goes on to, to make it to what is supposed to be, uh, Jessica Martin's house, but it's actually some other detective who is to say that she is Jessica Martin, but she's actually Dana. So, we have Bob that's like, oh, okay, well, like, I guess I'll just go on and, like, I guess that was, like, fine. I guess this is some girl, uh, or this is the, the girl that, uh, like, possibly had called. Even though, like, when Bob is to finally go home, after talking to his superior, who is Jack... And, like, Bob going on and having a certain package delivered at this police precinct. And I, I just want to get all this stuff out of the way so I can kind of cover all this. And Jack is asking Bob, it's like, well, hey, like, why are you going on and doing this whole day spa thing? I can put you on a task force. I can put you on something more exciting. And Bob is just like, you know what, like... I've gone on and done this job for 27 years. Like, I think I'm just done. Like, I think I'm just bored. So, Bob wants to go on and just retire so that way he can go to eventually uh, just do this whole day spa thing. And hopefully it's really going to, like, pick up like it should. So... Bob goes on and is to, like, uh, go and, and have, uh, like, kind of exfoliations and all this kind of, this kind of, uh, this stuff being put on his face, this algae being put on his face, and so all of a sudden, Bob just can't let something go, so Bob all of a sudden is to, like, ask for a certain information to hopefully be able to call this girl's uh, phone number. And there's a voicemail that is to be a different sounding name. And so all of a sudden Bob is like, wait a minute. Like the girl that I talked to before, she had an accent. This woman doesn't. So because I guess like Jessica who had called from that phone from that cell phone and now this Jessica like 
they had an accent. So Bob goes on and is to clean his face of all this, this chemical peel and whatever. And is to go back to that same house and is to kind of sneak in there and is to make his presence known that he's some cop. But Dana turns around and just starts firing at Bob anyways, leaving him some neck injury so or some neck uh, wound. So Bob goes on and is to have to shoot uh, Dana and come to find out she mentions that, hey, I'm a cop. It's like, oh, my God. So we now have Ryan, who's scrambling to this airport to try and save Craig here. So now Ryan is at this airport asking Jessica here. And I hope at this point I've kind of covered like up to everything at this point. Um, really just because like I feel feel that everything should have been probably been covered by now all the little stuff so going on to this story so ryan goes on and is to make it to this airport ryan asks jessica it's like well what does your husband look like uh d could you describe him to me and Jessica goes on and is to say he has a Lakers jacket, has blue jeans, and Ryan is just like, okay, all right. So Ryan grabs the first guy he sees with this Laker jacket on, shoves him into this restroom, and is to tell this guy, hey, like, your wife is on the phone. And so this guy is like, well, I don't know who this woman is, but it's not my wife. So Ryan is like, oh, my God, it's not the right guy. So we had Ethan and we had D's Deason, Deason. I'm going to go with Deason. That sounds like a interesting name. Both of them were held up by the metal detectors because someone was to go and find a gun in their uh, in one of their coats. Deason is to go for his wallet and say, "Hey guys, I'm a I'm a police officer," and so is Ethan. So we find out that all these guys are dirty cops, and Ryan's like, "Oh my God, this has gotten even worse." This has gotten so bad. So Ethan and Deason are to find Craig and to grab him. And now Craig is to be forced to have to give these guys information about where this videotape is because Craig was to go on and show this leasing home on this video to kind of just show uh, people what this house looks like and and I'm like oh my god here's the connection Craig then goes on and is to show that there is a bunch of cops all killing a bunch of people off and a lot of people are involved. Ethan's involved. Even Jack is involved. Uh, Bob's boss. So, like, everybody, like, a lot of cops are all involved in this. And so now we have it where, like, these guys are wanting to snuff this whole entire family out from possibly knowing this video. And so Craig... Craig is to mention to these guys that that he, of course, is to uh, that he is to have this videotape in this bank vault, and if anything happens to them, to his family or him, that like this, uh, like this 
account will be like put up to the authorities. So, or this this thing that's left in a safe deposit box. So, Ethan then forces Craig to go to this uh, safe deposit box to get this tape. So, Ryan decides that he's going to follow these guys all the way to where, of course, uh, Jessica's place is. We even have at one point in this movie where Ryan is to start to lose connection with Jessica's phone because weirdly wires are to get crossed. And all of a sudden we have some guy who is to be called a Bogato, Albogato, Avocado, a Bogota, a Bogota. This guy all of a sudden, and I saw this guy on the movie Condemned, and I was like, oh my god, this is the same guy. He's also in the movie The Hostel, the first one. Uh, so, and he always plays an a hole. Like I don't know why, but I guess he might. I hope he just really enjoys those kinds of roles. Uh, cause I don't blame him. So this guy, Abogado is on this phone and he's like, Hey, you guys like, uh, like uh, get off my line. And so we realize that Ryan is to lose this call and that his call failed. And so he has to find Abogado where Jessica is still kind of uh, talking to this guy and Ryan had to steal this guy's car and steal his phone. But then Ryan, while driving away, is to realize he's going in a tunnel. So he has to just kind of turn around and make this like crazy like drive to just get the heck out of there. And... The funny thing is, we have Avogado, who is to get his car out of impound after, like, the airport is to tow it away, and then Avogado is to pay for this car to get untowed, and Ryan, after he is to go on and steal this video tape from Craig while in this bank and then runs off with it where Ethan is to chase after him who's Jason Statham we have Ryan that is to escape the clutches of Ethan to then just see this video and realize he's like oh my god i'm a dead man like seeing this video is to be like radioactive <laughs> like you have dirty cops who are to do a crime and like who can you really turn to so and ryan's gonna end up dead trying to keep the secret of of who had done this and whatever so yeah like so a lot of trouble is going on here in river city it's not River City where they're from, but still, it's a joke. It's a joke, everyone. <laughs> so, Ryan goes on and is to hopefully try and now use uh, his cell phone that is in Avogado's car to recall these people to now like have a bargaining chip it's like well hey you guys want the tape i want this family let's try to go on and meet at a public pace place and we can do the trade-off so bob is to go on and he of course is to be injured and he uh is to call an ambulance and so he's to get his uh his neck kind of fixed here so 
Jack is to go on and mention to Bob, it's like, well, hey, like, hopefully, like, we'll be able to find this kid somehow and we'll be able to help him out. And Bob is just like, well, hey, like, I saw the kid before. Like, I know exactly what he looks like. So if you want some help trying to find what this kid looks like, like, I can help you out. So, so Jack is to take Bob to this place where it seems that all these other guys are at. And Jack is going on and seeing Ryan because at some point Ryan is talking with Ethan and he's seeing... He's, he's able to see the van that this family is in while he's bargaining for this video. We're all of a sudden having Chloe kind of uh, surprise Ryan and say like, Hey, like, where are those shirts that I asked for? I really need those shirts. And Ryan's like, well, hey, like. I get, I get that you needed that, but like, I'm busy right now. Like I, like I've gone on to something that I, like, I need to, uh, like take care of right now. And all of a sudden we have Bob who notices Ryan and he's calling Jack over like, Hey, the kid's right there. So Jack's like, yeah, like I've spotted the kid. So Bob is to go on with some police officer for both uh, Bob and this police off this undercover guy to just start walking away here. And Jack takes Ryan to go to Ethan and is to take this 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 camcorder, take the tape, destroy the tape, and it's like, well, I guess that's uh that's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> like, yeah, I guess that's going to be the, the end of all of that. Come to find out Ryan's cell phone was to keep the recording of that whole video. And, and so now... Like, we have this whole, like, chasing scene that goes on here. Because... We have a bunch of Ryan's friends that kind of come to the fold like, hey, guy, like, how's it going? And then Ryan jumps over the side of this uh, pier to then go into this water. And so Bob is to hear over this walkie what's going down. And Bob's like, oh, like, I guess, like, uh, I can't trust this officer that I'm walking with. So Bob goes on and starts fighting this officer and and goes flying through this uh, this one thing of glass and and starts beating him up and cuffing him onto this one like merry-go-round or whichever uh, like right by one so Bob is to tell everybody hey I'm a cop like this guy is a is a bad one evidently <laughs> so like uh, so Bob is to go on here and he is to like chase after he is to chase after uh jack and ethan and them so ryan goes on and is trying to hide away from all these guys so jack of course is be the first one that makes it to where ryan is and Ryan is just kind of hiding out, and so Jack is to go on and think that Ryan is to be in this spot, which he isn't. So, we fortunately have Bob, who's to kind of make his way uh, to help out, uh, to help out Ryan, because at some point we have... Uh, Ethan that goes on and is starting to beat up Ryan. 
as Ryan is much of a match for Ethan, where Ethan is to tell Ryan, it's like, well, like even the woman like had a better fight than you. Like, come on. <laughs> so because uh, at some point, Jack is to kind of uh, be taken out here. Uh, he is to be killed. I believe it was possibly by... Uh, it might have either been by Ethan or... Really could have been by uh, something that happened where Ryan is to kind of do something to take out... Or no. Jack might have just been taken out. Like kind of knocked out. So... Because we see him, like, towards the end of the movie. So, Bob is to meet up with Ryan after Ryan is to try to take down Ethan. And Bob is to have to try to arrest Ethan. And Ethan shoots out this light and tries to scramble off. Bob tries to shoot Ethan and just consistently just uh, keeps losing Ethan or whatever. We have a spot where Ryan is to like uh, go down and he hurts his leg. And Bob is saying, it's like, well, hey, just kind of hide out there. And like, we'll try to like figure out how to, to get these guys. So we have a one point where Ryan was to go on and call this phone that was at Jessica's house because the phone was to have gotten that number from that house. And so that's how Ethan could talk to Ryan and vice versa to put together this whole arrangement. So Ryan goes on and is to call this number and Ethan still has the phone in his coat. And Bob is to kind of spring into action and is to shoot Ethan and kill him. And so now Ryan is to scramble off to find the van that has Deason in it. Because Deason is soon going to try and kill Jessica and Ricky Martin and, uh, and, and Craig here. But uh, Ryan is to go out to this van, is to pull this guy out of there, and is to kind of bash him and kind of knock him unconscious so that way he doesn't go on and kill these people. So Ryan is to hand over his phone to Bob with this evidence of, of course the whole video that Ryan was to keep showcasing that whole video that Jack was to think that Ethan was to destroy. So Jack is to go on and get cuffed and say, it's like, well, Hey, like, uh, Bob, like tell him that I was like helping you out. And Bob is like, no, like you're a dirty cop. So, and there's and here's the evidence on this phone to prove it. So at the end of all this, like Ryan's in this ambulance and like Chloe's kind of looking after him. I wish there would have been this kind of really nice moment where like Ryan and Chloe would just make it work. <laughs> uh, just to have this like, well, hey, I'm sorry that I kind of blew your cover and like and this and that and like and maybe Ryan could go on and just say it's like, well, like. Like, I think we really need to go on and, and, and really talk the two of us like I think I have like after this moment, I think I really have changed. There could have been some little dialogue there, but that just never happened. But instead, we have Ryan that is going and meeting up with Jessica, and they kind of hug it out here. And Jessica, of course, is thanking Ryan for saving them. And Ryan is to tell Jessica, it's like, well, hey, like, you can do me one 
great big favor and never ever call me ever again. <laughs> send me a text, send me a tweet, send me a Facebook, send me a never call me. <laughs> like never. <laughs> If some, if like a fire, if a fire happened, no, no, not even any emergencies. Like call someone else, <laughs> call a Ghostbusters, call anybody but me. Uh, and that's just really how the movie is to just fizzle and, and end off at like Ryan uh, is to go on and help this family. But he's like, never call me again. So... It would it would just be kind of cool for there to have been like like a scene uh, that happens afterwards as like two months later where we have like uh, Ryan who is to spend time with with Jessica's family or uh, and like the relationship with Chloe and Ryan had worked out or didn't work out uh, but no there's just like the end of it where we just transition into credits where Ryan is doing all these silly adventures with his phone and like the, the credits were on the phone. So with that said, I think I'm just going to get out of here for time constraints. And hopefully this is not going to be two different footages and stuff like that. The longer and longer I talk. So with that said, I think I'm just going to get out of here. So I can try to put this out as quickly as possible. Cellular. Who would have thought that I would probably have done this movie? Probably me. Cause I like to go on and do a lot of like, there's a lot of times where I like to like say like, okay, well I've done like so-and-so actor film. Maybe I should go on and try to do this movie and whatever. Uh, even though if it might not hold up, even if it's just kind of like a goofy film. And even if I don't go on and say every little bit of it at the end of the day, I am done uh, with this review. Let me know if there's something that I did not say during the review of this. Uh, Cause I'm sure there's a billion things that I forgot about. Cause that, usually happens when i go on to review a movie there's some stuff that i just leave out or there's some stuff when after this review is to immediately be stopped i'm like oh yeah here's 30 different things that i forgot about but i just have to go on and let it go uh so with that said i'm gonna get out of here bye buddy bye buddy